The people of Scotland have spoken. We have chosen unity over division and positive change rather than needless separation. Scottish voters have rejected independence, deciding to remain part of the United Kingdom. It was a historic referendum that shook the country to its core. While most polls indicated a tighter result, Scots voted 55% to 45% against independence. Alex Salmon thanked Scotland for 1.6 million votes and accepted defeat graciously. Scotland has, by majority, decided not at this stage to become an independent country. I accept that verdict of the people and I call on all of Scotland to follow suit in accepting the democratic verdict of the people of Scotland. He went on to say that 86% turnout is one of the highest in the democratic world for any election or referendum in history. I'm proud Scot, I'm proud to be British, I want to be part of the UK. I want you all believe it now? I'm happy, that in, I'm, happy, I'm happy that in the morning I'm going to wake up Scottish and I'm going to wake up British. I'm just so happy. Salmon said that the Unionist parties had vowed late in the campaign to devolve more powers to Scotland, something they expect to be honoured in rapid course. Speaking from Downing Street, the Prime Minister David Cameron was already prepared. I can announce today that Lord Smith of Kelvin, who so successfully led Glasgow's Commonwealth Games, has agreed to oversee the process to take forward these devolution commitments with powers over tax, spending and welfare, all agreed by November, and draft legislation published by January. Just as the people of Scotland will have more power over their affairs, so it follows that the people of England, Wales and Northern Ireland must have a bigger say over theirs. The rights of these voters need to be respected, preserved and enhanced. The decision to stick together has prevented a rupture of the 307-year union with England. It also brings a huge sigh of relief from the British political establishment. I think over the last few weeks uh, we have seen a scare and a fear of enormous proportions, not the scaremongering directed at the Scottish people, but the scare and the fear at the heart of the Westminster establishment as they realised the mass movement of people that was going forward in Scotland. Many saw the build-up to the vote as a heads versus hearts campaign, some concluding that independence would be too risky financially, while others were enamoured with the idea of building their own country. Now we must look forward and turn this into the moment when everyone, whichever way they voted, comes together to build that better, brighter future for our entire United Kingdom.